Sugar Lookout is a rural town located in northwestern Ontario. Its boundaries cover 536 square kilometers of landscape, including dense forests, wetlands, Canadian Shield, and lakes and other waterways, which account for about one-third of this area. Sugar Lookout is serviced by Highway 72 and is located 71 kilometers from the Trans-Canada Highway. It can also be accessed by its airport and railway station, which boasts a via rail stop. Sioux Lookout is known as the Hub of the North because it connects 33 remote First Nations communities with healthcare and other essential services. Now, let's look at who lives here. The population of Sioux Lookout as of 2021 was 5,839 people. The demographics of Sioux Lookout include 18% aged 0 to 14, 68.4% 15 to 64 years old, and 13.6% aged 65 plus. Another important demographic extracted from the 2021 census is Indigenous identity. 2,090 people of 5,765 reported Indigenous ancestry. The most common language spoken in Sulukot is English followed by Indigenous languages such as Cree and Oja Cree. Other languages spoken reported on the census are French, Filipino, German, and Indo-Iranian languages. According to the socioeconomic profile from the municipality of Sulaco, the top five employment industries include healthcare and social services, public administration, retail trade, transportation and warehousing, and educational services. Now, let's discuss what makes Sulaco a rural community. Statistics Canada defines rurality as a population living in towns and municipalities outside the commuting zone of large urban centres, which are centres with more than 10,000 people. The nearest larger urban centre is Kenora, Ontario, which is located 235 kilometres from Sulacout and therefore outside the commuting zone. The nearest metropolitan city, which is defined as a city with greater than 100,000 people, is Thunder Bay, Ontario, which is located 392 kilometers from Sulacout. Another way to view rurality is through rurality indexes, which were originally developed as a means for policy development and evaluation. The current rurality index in use by Statistics Canada and the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care takes into account population size, which for Sulacout is 5,839 people, population density, which is 15.4 people per square kilometer for Sulacout, and the association with the census metropolitan area, which we discussed earlier, which is Thunder Bay. And for Silico, the rurality index score is 97 out of 100. Now that we've established Silico as a rural community, let's look at how the research has found that rural residents define their health. Gesser et al. found that rural residents tend to have a differing definition of health compared to their urban counterparts. For example, rural residents define good health as being able to work, participate in social relationships, and maintain independence with a greater willingness to accept ill health. This may be one contributor to poorer health in rural populations, because we do know that research also indicates that rural residents in Canada generally show a health disadvantage compared to their urban counterparts. Now let's look at the specific social determinants of health that affect the health of residents of Sulaco. The social determinants of health can determine the health issues that a person may face and other resources and choices available to them. The social determinants of health are systemic factors such as socioeconomic status, food security, occupational environments, housing mobility, healthcare access and availability, as well as social support networks. Differences in access to the social determinants of health mean that some people or groups face a greater risk for experiencing health disparities. For the purposes of this video, we are discussing how rural residents, specifically the people of Sulaco, face health disparities associated with the social determinants of health. Starting with socioeconomic status, which is a well-known predictor of health status and includes factors such as employment status, income, and educational attainment. Rural location is often associated with socioeconomic disadvantage, which affects healthcare access and health outcomes. According to the Northwestern Health Unit, which is a health unit that services Sulaco, it has a higher proportion of the population considered to have a lower socioeconomic status. The unemployment rate as of 2016 was 6.1%, which is slightly lower than the Ontario average but 24% of residents have no certificate or diploma, which is higher than the Ontario average that was reported in the 2016 census. Also, 12.4% prevalence of low-income status in Sulaco, which is comparable as well to Ontario as a whole. 
Therefore, for Sulukout, unemployment and low income status are comparable to Ontario, but Sulukout has a higher percent of residents with lower education. A factor specific to Sulukout that may impact both employment rate as well as low income status is the abundance of available jobs. For example, Suwet's Employment Services currently has 192 job postings, which exemplifies a great availability of jobs within the area. Another factor associated with health in Suwet is hazardous occupational environments. A large industry in Suwet is logging, which requires employees to operate heavy machinery, often in remote locations, creating hazardous work environments. Hazardous occupational environments contribute to higher rates of injury and therefore have been cited in the literature as a factor associated with poorer health in rural areas. The next such determinant of health is food insecurity. Households that experience food insecurity are more likely to self-report poor health and more chronic health conditions as well. Due to its northern geographical location and limited retail competition, Suluka faces food security challenges such as poor availability and accessibility to healthy foods such as produce, as well as higher than average retail food costs. For example, the Northwestern Health Unit conducted a food costing study in 2016 and determined that it would cost $1,020 a month to feed a family of four in Sulacout, $870 in Thunder Bay, which is the nearest metropolitan city, and about $840 in Toronto. Although located in the provincial north and facing higher than average food costs, Sulacout is not eligible for food subsidies under federal programs such as Nutrition North Canada. This is an important fact to mention concerning food prices are marginally higher in Sulacoat as opposed to urban areas. Housing is necessary in life. Lack of affordable, acceptable housing negatively impacts both physical and mental health. Sulacoat has almost double the percentage of households needing major repairs compared to Ontario. And although housing affordability is less of a concern in Sulacoat as compared to urban areas, availability is a great concern. Next up is social inclusion and social support networks. Social inclusion refers to the state of a community where all people feel valued, their differences respected, and basic needs met. In 2014, 77.6% of residents aged 12 and up in the Northwestern Ontario Health Unit catchment area reported having a somewhat strong or very strong sense of belonging within their community. This is statistically higher than the provincial estimate from Statistics Canada. The next social determinant of health is Aboriginal status. It is well established in Canada that health outcomes are much worse amongst Aboriginal populations when compared to others. In Sulacoat, about 36% of the population reports Indigenous identity, which is almost three times greater than the percentage of reported Indigenous identity for Canada. When discussing Aboriginal identity, context is very important because Indigenous identity affects health due to colonization. Some examples of colonization include things such as residential schools and the 60s scoop. In the late 1920s, a residential and day school called Pelican Lake School was established near Sioux Lookout. Due to ongoing systemic issues, the Indigenous peoples of Canada have historically experienced a great deal of trauma, which lives on in the lives of people today in the form of intergenerational trauma, substance use disorders, and mental health challenges. Next up is health services, where we will look at access as well as availability. First up, let's look at the services available in Sulaco. Sulaco at Mini Owen Health Center is a 60-bed facility that provides health services to the residents of Sulaco and surrounding areas, including many remote First Nations communities. A wide range of basic and specialized services are provided, including diabetes care, stroke prevention, mental health counseling and addiction services, as well as acute and outpatient programs. The only extended care facility located in Sulacout is the William A. George ECU, which is a 20-bed facility ran by Many Allen Health Center. The Sulacout First Nations Health Authority, or SLFNA, serves 33 First Nations communities in the Sulacout region. This means that any Indigenous peoples living in Sulacout from any of these 33 communities can utilize their services, which includes the Northern Clinic, Primary Care, Mental Health Services, Developmental Services, and Approaches to Community Wellbeing. Another branch of SLIPNA is client services, which includes the Jeremiah McKay Hospital that is located at Many Owen Health Center, which accommodates people from remote communities while they're accessing medical services in Sulacout. Client services also has transportation services as well as patient navigation, client advocacy and support, and discharge planning. The Northwestern Health Unit services Sulacout and offers many services such as dental services, chronic disease prevention, sexual health and harm reduction, vaccine preventable diseases, as well as various other public health services. 
Paramed Home Healthcare is the only home care service available in Sulaco. They offer a full range of home health services, including personal care, homemaking, therapy, as well as nursing services. Ontario Addiction Treatment Centers has an office located in Sulaco, which provides addiction services as well as community health services and harm reduction programs such as a needle exchange program. CMHA has a branch in Sulaco, which focuses on geriatric psychiatry, including a psychogeriatric resource program. The Hugh Allen Clinic offers a multidisciplinary team of physicians, nurse practitioners, and RPN who provide primary care to the residents of Sulaco. Now moving on to a closer look at availability and accessibility of health services in Sulaco. Residents of rural regions in Ontario have limited availability and access to primary care, specialists, hospitals, and community services, which contributes to poor health outcomes. Access challenges exist across the continuum of care, for example, hospitals are the default primary care provider in rural regions because other services are not available, which may explain why hospitalization rates tend to be higher in rural and northern areas. In Sulaco, there is no walk-in clinic available. Instead, there is one clinic with family physicians. But if you do not have a family physician, it may take months to get an appointment. Availability of transportation in some rural areas is also limited. For example, in Sulaco, recently emergency response has been downstaffed with one ambulance with one paramedic several times over the last couple months due to staffing shortages, leaving residents with limited access to ambulance transport. Although geography is not technically a social determinant of health, I think that it should be because geography affects the health care for rural residents, including those living in Sulaco. Another factor is travel distance, which can make access to services difficult and influences which services individuals seek. If a patient living in Sulaco requires, for example, an angiogram, they must be transferred via air ambulance to Thunder Bay, which is 392 kilometers away. If an individual is requiring non-emergent care, for example, to see a specialist, they are required to travel independently to the nearest urban area that can provide the service, which is usually Thunder Bay, a four-hour drive away, or Winnipeg, a five-hour drive away. An additional transportation factor is the hazardous nature of traveling from Sulaco. Due to its northern location, the winter months see a great deal of snow which causes hazardous road conditions. Also, most stretches of the highway, for example, leading to Thunder Bay, receive limited to no cell phone reception, impacting the availability of emergency services if necessary. The Canadian Community Health Survey indicates that across Canada, the self-rated health of Canadians declines from the most urban regions of the nation to the most rural and remote areas. Therefore, geographical location is thus a determinant of health. Another factor is the lack of rural perspective applied in planning at the provincial or land levels. There is also a gap in recognizing that the healthcare access challenges and needs in rural communities differ between southern and northern Ontario, and that challenges are typically accentuated in the north, including that each rural community is unique and may not have the same barriers in access and availability of care. To conclude our social determinants of health discussion, the Northwestern Health Unit's Health Equity and Social Terms of Health Report discuss that the rural nature of their catchment area, along with sparse population and immense size, present unique challenges for access to care, and are likely linked to the fact we have some of the worst health outcomes in the province. Now, let's look at some responses from residents of Sulacote on how they think rurality has impacted their health living in Sulacote. Here's a response from a former chiropractor in Sulacote. Living in a rural community has impacted my health in both a negative and a positive way. The negative impact is related to limited access to specialty healthcare services from both a proximity and variety perspective. Specialist clinics are in large city centers, which require significant time and financial commitment to travel to. Positive impact of rural living is improved air quality and easy access to diverse green spaces. These two aspects encourage physical activity and lessen the dependence on a sedentary lifestyle. Next up is a response from someone working in HR at Suica First Nations Health Authority. Rural communities experience increased difficulty with attracting and retaining medical staff. As a result, we have less access to services, especially specialized practitioners. Even accessing basic care is difficult. I can't just go to a walk-in clinic because one doesn't exist in our community. Lack of healthcare access leads to less utilization of health services, which equates to a lower level of healthcare for us. Now a response from a Bachelor of Education student from Lakehead University. What determine one's health? Many factors. These factors include personal, social, economic, and environmental. These are the social determinants of health. Living in a rural community ties into all factors that determine one's health. Living in a rural area can bring challenges for staying healthy. There's a lack of leisure activities that cities have. There's no pool, bowling alley, trampoline park, or group fitness classes. No youth groups either. 
rural communities suffer from geographical disparities. This can also blend into social isolation. Living in a rural community can be difficult when family is hours away. There is less access to health care and an issue with continuity of care. People living in rural communities often have months to wait to get into the one clinic in their community, leaving them to visit the understaffed emergency department to access health care. In addition, many health care providers do not stay in rural communities. Therefore, patients are shuffled through many different providers in a short time. In saying this, there is, of course, positives in living in a rural community. I feel most grounded and feel a deeper connection to the natural environment, instinctively improving my mental and physical health. I feel best in trees, exploring what our natural environment has to offer. I show great appreciation for my rural community. Now that we have explored the pertinent social determinants of health, let's look at the most common health issues found in Sulaco. What are the most common health issues that you have seen in Sulaco? This is a response from a critical care paramedic at Orange. Sulacout healthcare divisions have its common concerns like any community, but given the unique geography, specific social determinants of health, and communities it serves, there are specific conditions that are seen commonly. As a flight paramedic with Orange, I see these conditions in the acute and later stages of their disease processes, along with comorbidities that provide further complications. Some of the acute conditions are acute mental health conditions, traumatic injuries, high-risk obstetrics, diabetic emergencies, respiratory complaints, cardiac conditions, and cerebral vascular incidents. Underlying conditions that are also commonly seen are substance use disorders, mental health disorders, diabetes, heart disease, and congenital heart defects. The research indicates similarities to the recent response. According to the CMHA, compared to the provincial average, residents of Northern Ontario have higher self-reported rates of fair or poor mental health. Northern Ontarians also have self-reported higher rates of depression, and medication use is elevated as well, along with the hospitalization rate for Northern Ontario, which is twice that of the provincial average. Research also indicates that Indigenous people who make up about 36% of silicone have increased rates of type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and increased post-surgery mortality and complications. The role of the RN is diverse and important. Nurses work in various settings to identify and protect the needs of individuals, families, and the community. In silicone, there are many different settings that an RN may practice in including in education at Confederation College, which has partnered with Lakehead University to offer both an RPN and RM program, in community health at SLIFNA or the Northwestern Health Unit, providing primary care at, at Mediawin or with SLIFNA, as well as in long-term care at the William George Extended Care. One challenge for nurses working in Suicote is working in extremely understaffed conditions. This picture illustrates only a handful of the current vacancies at Mediawin Health Center. In order to continue providing health care, the hospital has had to utilize agencies to provide nursing staff, and now many Owen is staffed by approximately two-thirds of agency nurses. The Rural and Northern Healthcare Report, prepared by the Ontario government, discusses that scarcity of resources, including human, technological, and infrastructural, impact the ability of health professionals to practice their full scope. The panel recommended that in order for nurses and other healthcare professionals to rural locations to consistently practice on their full scope, further support is needed. An important way that I see nurses taking on leadership roles is to obtain positions that drive healthcare innovation and policy development. And to look out, this means holding both healthcare and administrative positions of formal leadership. I see innovation in finding ways to remain able to provide healthcare services to Sulaco out despite the extreme shortage of human resources in the area. Another example of innovation that I currently see is utilizing distance education and the resources available in the area to educate more future nurses. Although the program in Sulaco out is small, in April, there will be six new RNs graduating from the program who plan to remain in Sulacout and practice. Further innovation ideas related to nursing in Sulacout will be implementing creative strategies related to recruitment and retention, because this is one of the biggest issues that I see. Important strategies would be providing more support to new nurses in the area, including assistance in locating accommodations, as they are extremely lacking. Another important strategy for retention is finding ways to assist new residents in creating social support networks. This is really important because in moving to Sulaco, most people are leaving their families many, many hours away. So building other forms of social support is critical. In conclusion, the rural community of Sulaco has its unique challenges as well as strengths, which were identified in resident responses as being access to diverse green spaces, clean air, and a deeper connection to the natural environment. And I also hope exemplified in many of the pictures in this video. Another strength identified was the greater feeling of community connectedness, which I've also personally experienced when living in larger urban areas. But due to its rural location and demographics, Sulco experiences health disparities. Thank you for watching.